So hello everyone, welcome to today's uh, net network talk, network uh, reading group talking. Today we are going to talk about MIMO technique. MIMO is quite a hot word nowadays from uh, LTE to 5G, from Wi-Fi 6 and beyond. Even for a common set cell phone, like say iPhone 10, support four to four MIMO. So what is it? Let's discover today. The outline is uh, we will briefly introduce the background of MIMO and then theoretically analyze the point to point MIMO, which is a very beautiful mess and the upper, upper bound of our MIMO analysis. Then, uh, before the end, we will talk about um, the practice. Uh, the practice in in uh, in our real world to say the theory provide upper bound, but how how far we we have gone since twenty years ago. So the introduction, MIMO, is for sure talking about wireless communication. The foundation of wireless communication is based on electromagnetic wave propagation, which is very fundamental, and based on free. Uh, frequency spectrum, the, the available spectrum, and most importantly, most importantly, the information theory. The third part is going to be the main focus of this talk. And the direction to improve wireless communication is we can deploy more access points, which is the first one, or we, use, we allocate more frequency bands that what, what uh, all the country around the world do in 5G allocate a high frequency, higher frequency band. But the most important case is we need higher spectrum efficiency because the previous two methods and we ca cannot go unlimited. So the answer to higher spectrum efficiency is multi multiple antenna technique. And what is it? Multi, multiple antenna technique exploits the multi-pass multi -pass fading effects because electrical magnetic wave propagate in the space experience different uh, propagation phenomena like let's say reflection, diffraction, and scattering. So the same signal uh, emitted from a, a transmitter antenna can arrive the receiver. Uh, with different phase, different delay, different uh, amplitude. The uh, a takeaway word is the multi-pass effect can form a re relay fading. So uh, the, the statistic amplitude can follow the figure in the, in the uh, lower left side. <coughs> so how to overcome this fading or multi-pass effect is to employ, uh, to exploit uh, multiple antenna technique. There are three famous words. Uh, there are three cornerstone of uh, multiple <coughs> antenna technique: exploit diversity, exploit beamforming, and exploit multiplexing. <coughs> what are they? Several, several dry words can describe it. If diversity is to um, to record multiple copy of the same signal to avoid deep deep fading. So you see. It, if we assume the probability of phase is 10%, if you have two antenna, the probability of uh, deep fade is 10% uh, times to 10%, which can increase the re reliability. Beamforming is to uh, coordinate multiple transmitting antenna to, to adjust its phase and send its signal in the specific directions. But these are two, the words are too dry. Let's, let's look how the great superpower puts these two direction into extremes. The first is about diversity. NASA deep, deep space program sent spacecraft to millions and billions of miles away. They need, communicate, they need to communicate, but because the rotation of the earth, we cannot guarantee uh, the antenna are always Faced on the <coughs> spacecraft, so NASA decided to deploy three antenna uh, radar station in, in the U.S., in Australia, and in uh, in Spain. So each time, at at at, at each time, there is for sure one antenna point, pointing to the spacecraft. 
that's the exploit that's the exploited that diversity. Another example is beam forming from the uh, the lost power Soviet Union. Th this is the radar uh, radar antenna array in nowadays Ukraine. So you can you can deploy a large number of antenna arrays to beam form uh, to, to send signals in specific directions. And the the beam forming gain can be very high. Nowadays, um, not nowadays actually, but several decades ago, people all around the world can um, feel the signals emitted from this base station, uh, from this uh, antenna array. But uh, we, we are going to talk about the last cases, uh, both transmitter side and receiver side employ multiple antennas, which is called point-to-point -point MIMO. So, uh, to make it simple, uh, we we use uh, we use some we use some simplified model to describe MIMO link. Say so there are NT antenna at the transmitter side and NT antenna at the receiver side. So the relationship between the transmitter and the receiver can be described by the channel matrix. Uh, here is H, which uh, which is uh, which is, all the atoms are complex number because uh, wave propagation is um, is, is sensed either by, by by both amplitude and phase. In particular, we use the channel either deterministic or stochastic. Uh, in, in the following, we use this italics italics style of H to denote it deterministic, or the bold font as uh, so to denote the stochastic case. Before, uh, before giving the entropy of MIMO channel, uh, the, the mutual, inf mutual information of MIMO channel, we, uh, we first define the entropy of a random vector as a transmitter or receiver, because the mutual information is the differential entropy from transmitter to receiver. So we define the probability density of a circularly symmetry complex Gaussian, which is two-dimensional Gaussian for both real and imaging axis with mean mu, here are vector, and covariance Q. The density is given by this formula, and I'm, I'm not going to repeat, but, and we calculate its entropy. Because uh, thanks to the, in, the invariance of translation, we only consider the zero mean cases. The uh, case, the entropy is given by the negative, the, the, the expectation of its negative log. So we can see very clear uh, derivation. This part is constant, and uh, because we use uh, two as a logarithm of two, so the only the only uncertainty part is the, the last expectation. We do some um, commu commutative law to say the expectation of quadratic form, qu quadratic, uh, quadratics of the vectors. This turns out to be a identity matrix and the entropy can be simplified by log determinant of its variance, a covariance. Uh, why we use uh, circularly symmetric Gaussian is because circular, circularly symmetric Gaussian is our, our entropy maximizers. It has the maximum entropy in all possible distribution. Because we can give a very simple proof to say, uh, let's, oh, sorry, sorry, to say uh, if P is any uh, density function that's satisfying the this co covariance condition and this gaussian is a linear linear combination of the uh, covariance so the expectation is the expectation are the same because covariance metrics are the same if we do um uh, we, we use the entropy of arbitrary density minus the entropy of circular Gaussian, we can actually derive a function, a simplified function like this. This is quite, um, this is 
this is um, this is the p is range from zero to one because it's a probability. And recall the log function is concave. The, the, the probability of convexity is um, if we uh, the property of the convexity is the the middle of the function is larger than, um, than its linear combination. So if we move P inside and do, do expectation, do expectation, uh, the upper bound is expectation of uh, where, where, where Px diminish and the log, uh, log gamma, uh, the expectation of log gamma is one because it's a sum of a uh, density function and the log, the log of it is zero. So you, you see um, the difference of entropy is upper bounded by zero. So the entropy of circular Gaussian is uh, entropy maximizers. And this is the base for deriving a channel capacity because we want the maximum mutual information. So here we go is the channel, uh, channel capacity the, ch the channel capacity is defined by the maximum of mutual information from source to destination. So the destination is receive, uh, received signal, which, uh, which um, subtracts the conditional signal, uh, the conditional signal of, uh, on the transmitting signal. We, in, in previous uh, slide, we defined the, uh, the transmitting signal has a, the variance Q and the receiver, the output Y has a variance, which is the expectation of, um, it is, it's expectation of its quadratic form is um, HQ, H conjugates transpose plus the noise factor. So the maximum mutual entropy is realized when both the, the transmitted signal and received signal are circular Gaussian vectors and given by equation four. And the only constraint is the covariance metric, covariance of input signal, which is the power we can control at the transmitter side. The sum is up, the sum is upper bounded by the sum power P. So to answer the question channel capacity, we want optimal mutual information. Here are some dry mathematics to say if we uh, diag diagonalize the uh, quadratic form of channel matrix, we obtain uh, a diagonal matrix, uh, diagonal matrix lambda, big lambda. And um, because also Q is covariance, it's non-active and quadratic form of H is also non-active. We find uh, the, <laughs> the, inner, the inner part of this Occur, this curve is our uh, and some properties say determinant of matrix small is uh, of non-negative uh, matrix are definitely smaller than the product of the entries. Okay, so we arrive the equation six. We stop here because it's a little bit abstract. We uh, go and go an alternative derivation of channel capacity, uh, which is easier to understand. So if we diagonalize, uh, diagonalize the channel directly, the channel H by singular value decomposition, we could have um, U, V, R unitary matrix to, to, to do um, reflection or rotation of the tr transformation of H. And the diagonal matrix D, which denotes the scaling, uh, the, the scaling factor of individual, um, the individual dimension. We, we do some variable substitution to say Y, tiered to, tier to Y, tiered to N, and tiered to X um, by uniform transformation, we could have the we could have the, uh, right, the right side of equation eight. Record that we say the D are 
non-negative diagonal. So, so the, chan the, the channel can actually be written by individual parallel channels, like equation nine. Uh, each, each dimension, they are independent with, with others, with the channel gain, uh, with the channel gain, uh, lamb, square root of lambda i, where uh, i is the index of dimension. Sorry. Um, and the sum of channel capacity is the sum of individual parallel channels because they, they have no influence, influence to others. We, we do um, SVD, singular value decomposition, and only constrained by uh, subjecting to the po total power law the power allocated to, to individual channel are constant. So this is um, the log, uh, log, are convex, uh, log are concave function. So this, the, the very, very simple derivation is we do Lagrange, du find Lagrange duality and get the, cha the maximum channel capacity by water filling algorithm, which is quite famous in the field of MIMO. Um, so we give two examples to show how it works in, 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 in real scenario. So um, there are two examples which are either low rank. So suppose all the atom of the channel matrix are one, H then can be written by singular value decomposition, say, um, say this, both the left side and the right side are uniform transformation to rotate the function. But there is only one non-zero non non singular value. And the channel capacity is log one plus, uh, the log of one plus r, the number of receiver uh, times the total power. So we can see if we increase the number of receiver the total, the, the, the channel capacity increases um, logarithmically because it's inside the, the log. However, if there are some, imagine a perfect scenario where uh, the channel metrics have high rank. Suppose the number of transmitter antenna are the same as N and the channel matrix H is, happens to be the del diagonal identity matrix then we imagine there are n, there are n um, parallel channel, parallel channel where each power, uh, e each transmitter antenna has a power p divide n. So the the sum capacity is n times log. Note that here this n is outside of the lo the, the log function. Indicates that then some capacity can grow linearly with, with respect to the number of antennas. Um, I like yes, rank n, because we assume the, the channel matrix is uh, identity matrix of rank n, which is diagonal and or diagonal matrix are one. And um, at the beginning, we said we discussed the deterministic case or stochastic case because in practice, we cannot create a super promising environment, but we always consider the stochastic nature of nature, nature is stochastic. So um, we consider a relay fading matrix because relay fading um, is the most general um, most general stochastic uh, random variable that describes the multipass effect. And we assume all the entries of the channel matrix are relay fading, independent relay fading. So what does it mean? It means the amplitude, the magnitude are, is relay distributed and the phase are uniformly distributed. So absolute independence of all the, um, all the atoms in the matrix. Then a lemma here is given to for, for, for further derivation, say the distribution of the relay fitting matrix is invariant under unitary transformation because unitary transformation only rotate or reflect the 
um, the, the transformation because it is already homogeneous. It, the H is already homogeneous, so this lemma holds. And uh, this next is uh, we still assume circular symmetry compact Gaussian with covariance Q. And the channel capacity is given by uh, big, big phi Q. It's the expectation of all possible relay realization and the, the log of determinants. And the only constraint is the power, the total power constraints. So why the lemma of invariance is important is if it is invariant uh, under any possible rotation or uh, reflection. So we, we can only consider its special case. We only consider where um, we only consider the case of non-negative diagonal D um, and assume all other entries are zero because we can rotate it in this way. Besides, besides the rotation, we need to do permutation. Permutation means um, because all the entries are uniform, we don't know which one has highest rank and or the other uh, has lowest rank. So we treat them equally. With our possible permutation, where the, the, the factorial of number t, the transmitter, the number of transmitter antenna, uh, we have the expectation of diagonal uh, matrix tiered Q um, satisfy this expression. It can be a, a pro, it can be pro, proportional to identity matrix simply because of the uniform uniform distribution of the matrix. Uh, the uniform uh, hom homogeneous of all entry in this channel matrix. In this case, we can get a conclusion, say um, the maximum the maximum mutual information is obtained only when the power is equally allocated to all the transmitter antenna because you don't know which is better. So the channel capacity is given by um, only substitute P divide, uh, total power P divide number of transmitter antenna. Next step is based on brilliant, uh, some brilliant mathematicians that observed the quadratic form of this relay fading channel actually follows Wishart distribution. You see, uh, X follows this brilliant uh, Wishart distribution. And um, the channel capacity, if we, rate it, if we write, if we find its or eigenvalues, which is the square of um, singular value, the total capacity, you see, it's expectation of all possible or and or eigenvalues of the Wishart distribution. So the mathematical, the mathematical foundation is set up and what is the real performance? The real performance is we derive the, uh, we derive the, the value of eigenvalue or possible eigenvalue. Uh, in, in the literature, we, in the literature it is well studied, um, the well studied in the mathematics that there are expressions for ordered eigenvalue. So, um, from the largest to the smallest, the joint density distribution is expressed in equation 21. We can sum it up and do all the marginal uh, marginal expectation, but this is, of course, not optimal uh, derivation. And we we can we can utilize the unordered eigenvalues, say. Uh, we have a Wishart metric. Wishart metric. Wishart. We have a Wishart matrix, and ha we we want m times which m times eigenvalues. We don't know which is large, which which is small. Um, we just randomly pick m times from the unordered eigenvalues. So this so the channel capacity is further simplified by um, m times expectation of 
a random picked a random picked mode uh, eigenvalue determining the channel. Um, M, M, M is defined by the Wishart matrix, the, the smaller, uh, the, the Wishart matrix ha, ha, has, um, how, how to say it, M is a, is a smaller number of other transmitter or, or antenna because um, for Wishart matrix, this is the of yes, a minimum number of antennas. Yeah, you, you cannot, uh, for, for, for a channel matrix, um, M to, M times N, you, 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 the highest rank is its minimum attendance. So evaluate its capacity can simply, uh, based on the marginal value of an, an, ordered, an unordered lambda one, by derivation, we can have equation 24, I'll uh, say, here is very complex. I put the derivation in the appendix for if you have interest, we can share the derivation, but we, we won't talk it further. We can um, obtain a derivation of this channel capacity uh, based on Laguerre polynomials and other, um, other exponentials. This equation is quite promising, say the capacity grows or increases um, linearly with a number of rank, with a number of MIMO, uh, with number MIMO antennas. So say, um, if we only consider diversity, say beam form, either beam forming or uh, receiver, uh, rece maximum maximal ratio combining at receiver, the capacity grows logarithmically. So you see the curve here, the curve here, because it considers both the number of transmitter and number of receiver. But if we employ multiplexing, you can see the capacity grows linearly, which is a very beautiful uh, property we want. But this is assuming that as you grow the number of antennas, uh, you still have this IAD. Yes, uh, yes. <coughs> Really phase. But yeah. Up to, up to this, uh, up to this point where you still have that even phase, you go to the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so professor mentioned a very, very important um, assumption we made in the analysis is independence. So, in this case, each each transmitter antenna are independent and each receiver attain are independent, but this is impossible. So, um, and that's why the MAMO, uh, that, that's why it is so, so difficult to bring the theory into practice and why today, um, say Wi-Fi 6, which is one of the most advanced, advanced uh, MIMO, only supports two times two stream MIMO. To support only two stream of um, wireless uh, data streams. So um, the, the reason is that if you mount multiple antennas in one devices, they are highly correlated. And the next step we are going to discuss uh, the attempt the endeavor made by um, researchers to bring this beautiful theory into the real practice. The to avoid this um, correlation at the device side, people, the researcher first proposed multi-user MIMO. Uh, oh, so, so, sorry, this, this constraint should, should, be, should be discussed. Uh, this is a, I repeat, the, the, the constraint of point-to-point -point MIMO is you need a receiver device mounted with multiple, uh, multiple antennas. So first you need a, a, a specific radio frequency chain for each antenna, which is high cost. And, um, oh, so, sorry, this is a mistake. There is there high correlate, uh, no, this is, yeah. Uh, there exists high correlation among antenna arrays you see in the in one receiver uh, and we 
requires high uh, rich scattering environment to guarantee the independent fading or at uh, last but not least we need very very high snr to exploit the water filling algorithm we could, because if there is very low SNR, there are very low water level, maybe you only utilize one stream of the antenna, it's a waste. So th these constraints um, make the, the theory very difficult into practice. So the first attempt is multi-user MIMO. So say if all the user devices are not uh, mounted on one devices, but they are mounted on individual uh, users. So in this case, the um, fading among attainers are, are independent, right? So the advantage is they are less sensitive to assumption on propagation and uh, low cost because each terminal have only sing have single antenna. The requirement requirement for doing um, singular value decomposition for doing the uh, some Gaussian elimination like linear algebra is you have the global channel state information. Um, in the uplink side, it's okay because all the um, all the terminals send information to the base station. The base station have the global view of all the channels. But what about downlink side? The each terminal need to know all the channel information of all other friends, which is very high cost, and it requires very complicated uh, signal processing, which may delay the communication. So multi-user MIMO is not a success, but massive MIMO comes to a success. You know, since 2010, the professor Mazetta, um, which is very, who is very brilliant, uh, pro proposed the scalable multi-user MIMO to utilize beam forming and multiplexing simultaneously to say, um, yes, still you do multi-user MIMO like previous slides, but, but it realized in this way, each terminal sent its pilot to the, to the base station and the base station is equipped with a massive amount of antennas. So with a massive amount of antennas, you can do very, very, um, how to say, uh, the best beam forming. So each beam points to the receivers with very low interference to others. And all, other, all, the, user, um, all the user just assume the interference from his friend are very low and apply linear signal processing by decoding SINR rather than SNR, because uh, we, 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 we will say, what does it mean? So joint beam forming and spatial multiplexing becomes um, re 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 reality nowadays, nowadays technology. In 5G, massive MIMO has become, has become standard and all the vendors has already there has already published very very nice product of massive MIMO. For example, uh, Nokia nowadays provide 64 <coughs> attainer base station called Airscale. And there is no one, there is no wonder that the number of base the, num the number of base station antenna would go grow even larger in the future. Not only in the downlink, but also on the uplink. Uh, yes, yes, uh, because as the previous we have discussed, uh, the downlink has some uh, privilege because the, the base station must know all the channels of all the users. That's so they are the, 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 the information for the uplink are already available. So uh, as, as, as I said, to reduce the complexity for downlink, in particularly for downlink, the system must sacrifice some accuracy because you assume uh, for individual device, you assume um, all, the others, no, all the others signals are noise and the interfer interference are very low. So 
if so in this case you, you, you there are two algorithms namely zero forcing or minimum uh, minimum mean square error is um say you, you say so individual device users have no idea of all other interference so he has, so he has two options either you estimate the interference of others you have an estimation error error or you just neglect this this part so you do zero forcing and you have the error of um ignorance the error of ignorance this complex uh, formula are not the uh, main topic of today, but uh, we might cover it in next uh, MIMO talk. So the most important thing here is performance. The solid line on um, here, the, the two figure consider both uplink and downlink. The solid line is the uh, MIMO, the point to point MIMO case where all the users or the um, all the users or the base station know all the channel states but, but this dashed line you see uh, they are upper bounded by it but they have uh, some favorable favorable area say if the beam forming are very very good because the number of base station antenna are very high then you can fairly say we just neglect all the interference from others. Then in this case, zero forcing performs better. But if the number of base station antenna are comparable with the number of user, say here is 16, you'd better waste some time on estimating the interference. So that's the massive moment. So this is the, the reference of today's talk. One, it, both of the book are very, very classic. The first is the theoretical analysis on, mass, on MIMO, point-to-point -point MIMO with global knowledge. The second one um, actually uh, tell us what re reality is and how far can we go until today. So that's all. Thanks for your attention and, and welcome to any questions. Are there any questions on the bridge? Or in the room? So, zero forcing can be seen as a sort of uh, poor math implementation of looking at uh, eigen independent uh, orthogonal eigenspaces, right? So, because you, you basically, uh, if it, it would be, there was no, no effect, no effect of interference from that. Oh uh, yeah, you pretend there is no inf interference, right, right. but there is. There, yeah, there so is. It doesn't, it doesn't do as well as the uh, as, as the uh, eigenspace analysis, but it, uh, uh, but yes. it's, it's, a, it's sort of full month implementation. Of the, yeah. So of yeah. The, so the answer is re reduce the complexity, sacrifice some accuracy, mm -hmm. but you, you can increase the number of antennas mm -hmm. systematically rather than serving specific individual user. So you can see why massive MIMO becomes success in cellular network in 5G, but no Wi-Fi would use it because Wi-Fi only serves several users at home at local um, access network. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, but I must, uh, I must admit that uh, my understanding on massive MIMO is not very deep, no, not very deep. So if you have further detailed question on massive MIMO, better ne next time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other questions as well? No. No other questions on the bridge? Yeah. Okay, so I think that's what one more, just a, just a question of question. So when you have so when you have uh, when you relax this uh, IID assumptions on the page, right, which is sent from 
So you could have like uh, uh, I mean, other in the spectrum, the, the Richard matrix shows up when you have this dependency, right? But um, there, are, there, are, there are variants which have been studied lately. Yes. Where you have some some form of uh, dependence, yeah. and so uh, are the extension? What are the current extension? What is state of the art uh, on the extension of the Telacar type thing? When you remove the the assumption of independence of the of the of the relic phase and replace replace that by whatever else. Uh, well. Uh, the, <laughs> This is a very, very important question on the development of Wishart matrix. Um, as far as I know, nowadays, Wishart, the analysis on uh, Wishart matrix has gone very, very far, has gone very, very far because really, um, really distribution, uh, the, the in, uh, absolute independence uh, is very impractical. Nowadays, um, in, in the literature, we can find researcher research on rise and fading. Say there are some uh, non-zero, non-zero. Um, sorry, here. Oh, we can have this non-zero non component, or there are some correlation either on transmitter side or re receiver side. Uh, there are there exists closed form expression to derive the density distribution as a joint joint distribution or um, marginal distribution. On the yeah, on the eigenvalues, both unordered, unordered. Uh, these analyses are quite advanced mm -hmm. in the mathematical field. So, and even what's even interesting is um, some researchers, I, some French researchers, just um, Pasteur, uh, I forget the whole name, has uh, developed the asymptotics of Wishart distribution. Say so if the number of transmitter, both transmitter and receiver go uh, infinitely, but they have some, some relationship, like the proportional relationship, you can have a almost certain, um, the, the value of, the, the eigenvalue can, you have, can have some almost certain expectation or real value. Oh, I didn't, I didn't hear clearly. Okay, we can discuss later. Yeah, so yeah, the analysis on Wishart distribution is very, it, it can be another talk to simply focus on Wishart distribution and its variant. It's very, it's a very beautiful mathematics analysis. So, okay, so it covers the rice case and the case where you would have still uh, marginals which would be uh, relayed, yeah. but with some sort of dependence. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The interference, uh, the interference depends heavily on the choice of the experiment by either. Yes. It's not necessarily, uh, uh, it's not necessarily less significant. Oh, uh, so you, you, you see here, um, you see here, if the number of uh, base station antennas are even larger, right? You, you can do better beam forming, like we have shown what the Soviet Union has done. Uh, they use extreme scale of antennas. So with more, with more antennas, you can adjust the phase. You have more flexibility to adjust the phase of individual signals. You can deliberately decide in one direction, the signal are in phase in the same phase. So they, their, their, their um, strains are amplified, but in other direction, um, they, they have some self-cancellation because the phase may auto phase. So, so it depends on the scale of how massive the mammal is. <laughs> yeah.
So I, so your question is about the performance or what? Uh, yes, uh, my question was about the interference. Uh, oh, okay. Right. Uh, the interference is, yes, it always exists because even if you do uh, beam forming in one direction, there are some set lobe in, in the other directions. We cannot diminish it. But a fair assumption is if you do beam forming very good, the uh, interference is very low compared with the main beam. So that, that's why we are talking about um, that's why we talk about this figure is if you have extreme number of base station antennas, your beam forming is really, really good. So you can safely assume uh, the interference is zero. See here, you, you, you assume the interference is zero. You don't, you, you don't care their interference because it's the side lobe are so small. Um, but if the number of base station antenna are small, comparable that comparable with the um, number of <coughs> users k okay. uh, the beam forming may not that uh, um, yeah not that good so you see the performance here for both figure left side or right side the punishment the, the accuracy punishment is very high so it's better to estimate the interference so yes it, So, so the question is, noise is there, inference is there. It depends on your strategy. You can neglect it or you can estimate it. Or in the best case, which is the solid curve, say, you know it. You, 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 you know exactly the in, what the inference is. So you, it, it, we, re, we return to the point-to-point -point MIMO case. Everybody has a global view of channel metrics and information of others. Then it's the upper bound, this solid line, it's upper bound. But this would be a very high cost. For all devices, you need to know all the others' information. So you sacrifice massive MIMO sacrifice this cost, complexity cost, with with a gain of massive MIMO. So what else is careful because this is the effect on the ground but there are also, also other base stations which inform and which could use to, uh, to this area. Yeah. And so in the network, in the network, things are uh, Yeah. Uh, are quite, uh, quite, uh, yeah, actually, uh, Professor pointed out the cutting edge uh, research on massive MIMO is called pilot contamination. Mm -hmm. It is say, uh, if you do beam forming, your beam is so, so nice and it propagates to other cells. So the number of pilots is limited because, for example, you, we, we allocate uh, 20 symbols just for pilots estimation. Um, if in a very, very large area, you can only use 20 pilots, then the number of user is also limited. Yeah, this is a really, really a problem in practice. So the later development of massive MIMO is cooperative massive MIMO, which is in standard, already in standard release 12, um, to say um, you, you send your pilot at this time, I send another pilot in another time, we <laughs> cooperatively avoid this um, yeah, disadvantage. Like yeah, yeah. yeah, so. Yeah. This is quite cutting edge research. <laughs> Are uh, there other questions in the room on the bridge? Uh, okay, okay. So um, uh, thank you, Wulong, again.